Hi. OK, so yes, thinking about thinking about people. First thing I want to do is show you some of my favorite people. Uh, this is my daughter and my son. If you were in Barcelona, you might have met him. He's a little bit older now. Um, we're fortunate to live on a bike path, which is a thing here, but not so much a thing in the States as much. Um, and every day, if it's nice in the summer, we commute back and forth from school on this. Um, so I'm, I'm a pretty big bike nerd. I'm very excited to come to Amsterdam. Bikes, right? And you see this everywhere, all over Amsterdam. Um, kids are like monkeys, they're like hanging off of stuff, and they're hanging off the back. Um, and I discovered that as a pedestrian, this is deeply terrifying. <laughs> Um, and I think that's mostly just coming from the U.S. Um, so I was like, well, you know, is this really that crazy for, for Amsterdam people? So I found this great video um, that we're going to show now, and I kind of want to talk through this just a tiny bit. So this is a not-so-rush-hour street in Amsterdam, um, and you're going to start seeing some interesting things happen here. Speed it up a little bit. Watch the people in the circles. This is the kind of stuff that starts to give you like a little bit of sort of like, like anxious kind of feeling, like where is this going? What's going to happen here? Um, this is modeled after someone who did something at a three-way intersection in New York. Um, I'd like you to look at this, think about auto automatic cars, um, just for a second. And at 105, by the way, in that video, a pigeon crosses the intersection on the ground. Totally makes it. So pigeons are fine, everyone's safe, right? But coming from the US, it's kind of like this. Um, and and for, But for people who live here, it's fine, it's okay. So the context of my set of experiences makes this you know, kind of terrifying. So I thought, well, why does this not seem terrifying to people who live here? You know, what's their context like? So there's gonna be a bit of a divergence here into uh, Dutch traffic engineering, because why not? So um, there's been a bunch of interesting experiments, mostly many done here, um, but some done in other you know, sort of countries. Germany is one of the ones there. Hans Mondermann, was the man behind this shared space movement. Um, his theory was that the more restrictions we put in to shared traffic environments, the more people sort of narrow their focus, ignore the things out there, don't look at the people around them, and you have more problems and traffic accidents and things as a result of that. So they did these experiments. They took all stop signs and signals and crosswalks and everything out. It's like, oh, no, and everything was fine. Actually, traffic incidents went down, safety, by certain standards, went up. Um, people started trying some of this in the States with mixed results. Um, so the question is, you know, why? Why, would that, why? why did that necessarily work or did it not work? And you have to start asking questions, not just about the system, but the people in it. Um, why is biking in Amsterdam, is it less dangerous? Why might that be? What are the Dutch cyclist experiences? What are their expectations? Do they feel safer than I do or not? Um, and an interesting thing, so about those traffic experiments, the safe or the shared spaces, uh, a couple of the projects, one in I think Drochten and, and Haren, they were reversed because despite the objective measures of safety, the residents subjectively reported feeling less safe and the towns just couldn't politically get away with it any longer. Um, so the system showed certain properties that the people in the system didn't necessarily share. So how do we... How do we do this? Like, how do we see people in these kinds of systems? And for us here, what we're really talking about is seeing people in technical systems. And what I and many of the other people who've been speaking here um, at Velocity are asking you to do is sort of embrace the basic tenet of cognitive science, which is thinking about thinking, thinking about how people think, how you think, how other people think. Um, you can go out and talk to people about how they think, and I, please, by all means, I hope you're doing that. Um, but that's not always possible. Uh, and you know, for all of you who are building and running insanely complex distributed systems that affect millions of people every day, you have to start to infer things. Um, and how do you think about how people think in the systems that you're building? So I wanna give a couple concrete examples of how I think people are doing that right now. So the first one I wanna talk about is, it's web performance, right? Page load time. So page load time has been sort of the hallmark of web performance for quite some time now. And I picked some headlines of this. Um, infographics and things. It's nice to see that people are paying attention to this. Um, Steve and crew have been banging this drum for a very long time. The problem is, now that people are starting to pay attention, we're kind of moving the rug out from underneath them because page load time seems like it might be a great way to reflect what someone's experiencing with a website, but that particular metric's based on an assumption, um, and people are starting to finally question that assumption. 
which is, this is the requisite XKCD slide in a Velocity conference or keynote talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> so does page load time reflect the experience that people have with websites? Turns out not so much. So I'm cribbing from Steve's work liberally right now here. Um, but the days of having one singular way of sort of representing the performance of a web page, much less the experience that people are having, is in the rearview mirror. And the complexity of the pages that we're building is well beyond something like page load time. But even more than that, it's not just the complexity. It's that page load time doesn't even really accurately reflect people's perceptions of whether a website is fast or not. So this is what you're seeing up here are a couple of screenshots from web page tests that Steve took. Um, this is Amazon. So at two seconds, 89% complete. Five seconds is your page load time. You can see at two seconds, you can do everything you probably want to do on an Amazon detail page. And all the other super heavy stuff that happens on Amazon comes later below the fold. And Amazon's really figured this out. Um, and I just wanted to bring up something. This is, I thought this was pretty funny. This is a study from 2001. So that's not a typo, 2001. Two women looked at people's experience with websites. I think they had to do it over dial-up. Um, and of course, window.onload didn't exist then, so hand-waving all caveats apply. But I loved their conclusion, which is that it seems that when people accomplish what they set out to do, they perceive that site to be fast. Because the interesting thing in that study was the slowest site was Amazon. It was a really long time to load but people perceived it as fast because they were able to do what they wanted on it, move on with their lives. So they were able to do what they want. Well, what do people want? Depends, and you have to spend more time understanding your business and your users, and that goes into your code. You need to know this stuff. Um, this is a great example. So Alex McCaw from Twitter wrote this back in 2013. Their key metric is time to first tweet. And that's what they drive towards on everything and on the system side. And all their metrics are arranged around that, right? This isn't as easy as tracking load time. So if you, if you want to find out more about this, um, Steve has done a really nice video that I'm re I really like um, on this. You can find it on O'Reilly's site. There's a little short piece about it. Um, but I want to move on. So I want to talk about some ops, more ops-related stuff. So I'm advocating that we keep track of people and not servers. Uh, this is a tweet from uh, Velocity New York which just made me really happy. I'm pretty sure he walked, just had walked out of like a James Turnbull monitoring session. Um, but it's, it begins to make the point. Like, it's hard to give these things up, right? Like, what, I'm not monitoring CPU. It could be really bad. Actually, probably not. So um, it's important to monitor what really matters. Like, how do you know what you're looking at? And you want to think about that from the user and the business perspective. So these are two examples. Um, the one on this side is actually from Groupon. Um, it's a sudden drop in orders. And the other one, um, I'm not even going to go into where it's from, but basically it's they're tracking a set of servers and they're looking at, at CPU load. So which one would you wake somebody up at 2 AM about? You don't know, right? Because you don't know Groupon's business necessarily. So it turns out that one, uh, sudden drop in orders, they went poking around. One of their deals had sold out. You don't wake someone up for that. Your business is working. Um, the server spike was due to a Windows update. Don't even know, they didn't even know if that had an impact on customer or revenue. So this was, I stole this from Catherine yesterday. Um, it doesn't matter how good your uptime is if your site doesn't solve customers' problems. And solving customers' problems, knowing what their problems are, what their wishes and desires are, can't just be one person's responsibility. So this is where I've been getting to. Um, this was from a slide uh, from a talk that Theo uh, Schlossnagel gave at Velocity in 2011. Um, you could maybe just condense that to like star ops. Um, but we've all heard the phrase, software is a team sport. I agree wholeheartedly, but who, who's on your team? I'm thinking about that. How broad is your concept of your team and the people you have involved? Uh, because you can't know all of those things about your users. There's lots of other people that you work with that know those things. Do you know who your designers are? Have you hugged your security person lately? So, <laughs> Using all of your organizational options for thinking about thinking about people in your systems can mean the difference between this and this. Thanks. <laughs>